Hi, everybody. This is Dave Klein. I am the presenter of Pennsylvania's Americana Region Festival. It's happening right here in Reading in Berks County. And we're absolutely thrilled to be able to include the Berks History Center and all of the guests you're going to hear tonight. You know, the COVID-19 thing has really got us all a little bit up, up, uptight, let's say. And it's nice to get together. It'll be nice when we can do it in person. But this year, we couldn't have the induction ceremony, which is what we're here to do, for the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of fame together with each other sharing music sharing stories about those great days when we made music and the days where we're still making music in many cases so the next best alternative to just throwing up your hands and quitting because that's not cool is just to say okay we can pull this together we can affect change here we're not going to take just lying down doing nothing so we're going to get together here on zoom and we're going to use that technology to go ahead and meet a whole bunch of people that we're going to induct virtually into the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which by the way is housed in the Berks History Center, Historic Center Park area. I'm proud to say that I was one of the co-founders of the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I'm gonna turn things over to people so that they can carry on with this induction. And it's something I take very, very seriously. And the reason why is because here in Reading, Pennsylvania, we have a wonderful and robust and enormous history in music and in the music industry. I mean, we're right there between Philly and New York City, if you wanna look at it geographically, but we've had a lot of talented musicians in the past come here. Everybody from like John Philip Sousa came to gig in Reading, right, to the most famous artists you can think of. You name them, you can write down a list. B.B. King, he played here. Uh, the father of bluegrass music, Bill Monroe, all kinds of diverse music and musicians played here. And our musicians worked for a long, long time on live stages and theatrical productions and recorded productions to entertain people, not just here, but around the world. So that has spawned some of the best festivals you're gonna find anywhere, like the Burt's Jazz Fest, we have a Blues Fest, we have a Folk Festival up in Kutztown, and now this year, because of COVID, we have this virtual Pennsylvania Americana Regions Festival. So without further ado, I'd like you to meet and greet some of the people who are gonna help with the inductions, and I celebrate their induction into what I consider to be a brotherhood and a sisterhood of musicians right here in our community. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot, Dave. Uh, my name is Benjamin Neely. I'm the executive director of the Berks History Center. And uh, I'm fairly new with the organization. I'm still working on my first year and I was supposed to be at a party tonight. And uh, instead I'm, I'm sitting here in my home office <laughs> uh, on the computer. Uh, so, I hope uh, those of you watching have a strong drink in your hand and uh, uh, are gonna listen to some music later. I join you with a strong drink now, but I have to read all this information about our inductees and I will have a difficult tough time with that as it is. Uh, so, you know, we're very proud to be the home of the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I remember my first walk through the museum uh, when I was uh, learning about the uh, institution, and I just thought, what a, what a creative thing uh, to have, and uh, what a thoughtful thing to have. And I've always uh, admired those who can play instruments and sing. I myself, um, I'm a well-respected and proud owner of a banjo here at home. Not a player, there's a distinction, but I definitely own a banjo and have for years. Uh, but I, I have a deep respect uh, for those who are able to pick up an instrument, uh, uh, whether it's a, a guitar or a keyboard or a, a wind instrument, whatever it is, or to be able to use their voice. It's, it's incredible. And so uh, I'm, I'm very happy we're able to do this. And I, I really hope that this time next year, we're able to just have a wonderful party back home at the Berks History Center. We're, we're, we're very anxious to get back there. And we hope you all are too. So I'm also gonna be joined uh, with, by uh, Mike Anderson, who's on the call here, who's going to uh, fill in uh, the gaps for me and, and some of our, uh, the information we have on our inductees. And uh, will we'll be helping me out here. So I'll be calling on him from time to time as, as we go through this evening. But uh, unfortunately for all of you, you're gonna hear a lot of talking from me. And- uh, All right, by me. <laughs> right. But I'd like to get started in our first category here is to uh, induct uh, our, our musicians. 
And so we were joined by some of the musicians uh, this evening or their loved ones. Um, and we're going to start off here at the top of the show here by inducting Dave Elts. And uh, sadly, Dave is no longer with us, but uh, we are joined by his son, uh, David, and his cousin, Mike, this evening uh, to, to hear his, his induction. Uh, Dave Elts, um, uh, in a lifetime of 61 years uh, and a career of 50, has performed with a multitude of acts. Uh, to name a few, Dave was a, the keyboardist on a bunch of funk, uh, the Uptown Band, Fifth Avenue, Zeus, uh, the Quarter Notes, and Jackpot, along with many others. Uh, Dave would undoubtedly be honored at his induction into the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, his life was shaped by music and the making of music in Berks County. And it was through his musicianship that he met his wife and numerous fast friends. From his band's earliest performance to skipping his own senior prom to perform at another, uh, to frequent performances at First Energy Stadium and annual appearances at Burke's own Jazz Fest, his music kept him uh, well engaged in the local scene and he was always down for another performance or a new sound. Uh, the joy of creating and enjoying the music of Burke's is one that soothed him to the very end. Uh, so that, that's very sweet. Um, so we're very proud to have him as a new member of the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And we have, um, just, uh, just to note, uh, Dave's cousin, Mike, on the line, and also his son, David, as well. So I don't know if you, want to, if you guys wanted to give a wave. Thank you for being on the call with us. Okay, uh, next up we have uh, Michael Garner being inducted and he is actually uh, joining us this evening if he wants to give a wave here. Uh, Mike Garner began his drumming career at a very early age and elementary school. His older brother Bob Garner was a major influence. Mike's brother was a drummer as well as his uncles George and Bobby Price who were not only drummers, but were instrumental in the creation of the Reading Buccaneers Drum and Bugle Corps. Uh, Mike worked on his rudiments and drumming skills while he was a member of the West Reading High School Marching Band under the direction of Homer Barhold. Uh, when his brother returned from England in the early 60s, he introduced Mike to the first Beatles album before anyone knew who they were. And at that moment, his life changed and the rest is history. Uh, Mike Garner played with many bands nationwide, but some of the bands he played with locally were the Sticks and Stones, Pete Culpepper Excursion, Bonnie Boyer Show Band, Hurricane, and the most influential and most notable, the Wells Fargo Band. Mike says, I have always been and will always be a drummer. It is in my blood and in my heart, thanks to all the drummers before and after me. So, Thanks a lot for joining us here this evening and uh, congratulations on being inducted into the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> All right, up next here, we have Chico Leverett and uh, sadly Chico is passed on, um, but Chico Leverett, uh, he may not be quite as well known as say Marv Johnson or Eddie Holland, but he was a founding artist on the Motown label. He was born Charles Leverett in Washington, uh, Georgia, and raised in Detroit. Chico was an early mainstay on the Motown label. As a member of the Satin Tones, he was the major songwriter within the group, and he also recorded as a solo artist. Leverett's songwriting ability grew in his teens. After answering an ad in 1959 placed by Barry Gordy Jr. in search of singers, composers, and players, Leverett recorded two originals. Solid Sender, which became Leverett's nickname, was a beautiful vehicle for Leverett's expressive baritone with a great beat and catchy hook all the way through. The song itself, as he told Bill Dahl in an interview, came about after a dare from his uncle, a minister to write a secular song which might normally be considered the devil's music. The B-side, I'll Never Love Again, was a ballad written for Leverett's wife, and together they composed the fourth record ever issued by Motown. 
Leverett went on to cut several more sides as a member of the Satin Tones. Chico claims he influenced Gordy by choosing the name Motown for his label. When Gordy asked for ideas for a label, Leverett suggested Motor City Records using the name of his first Satin Tone side, a catchy number called Motor City. The suggestion might not have been a home run, but certainly sounds like it was a base hit towards the same part of the fences. The Satin Tones were the first group to record a single for Motown, beating out Smokey Robinson's group, The Miracles, by three months. Chico left the group during the late winter of 1960. Leverett later relocated to Reading, Pennsylvania, where he lived for many years and cut a few single sides that subsequently turned up on the local Bethlehem label out of Reading. He also later became an executive producer at the Music Now label, where he wrote and produced songs for Eddie Carroll, Emmanuel Lasky, as well as sides by the Dells and the Originals. Levert rejoined the Satin Tones in 1990 for a one-off recording project and resurfaced for interviews used in the booklet accompanying the 2005 release of Motown Complete Singles, Volume 1, 1959 to 1961. Around that time, Leverett was part of a mixed-race street corner doo-wop group called the Paramounts out of West Reading. They recorded a single on the Columbine label written by Leverett. The flip side was co-written with Bill Fisher, a Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame member. This record is highly sought after by record, record collectors and is always fetching a hefty price. Leverett loved his time in the Reading music scene. He passed away on December 5th, 2013 at age 79. So uh, we welcome Chico Leverett into the Bar Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And next up on our list of musicians to induct this evening is Jim McCauley. And we are joined by uh, Liz McCauley this evening. And uh, she's uh, gonna say a few words, I'll call on on her as I, I come down to the end of this. This will give her a chance to get ready to unmute herself here. But uh, Jim McCauley loved life and music, especially playing the guitar, which he started at an early age. He would often be found jamming with his friends throughout the Reading area. His first formal band, Prophet, played classic rock and featured a lead female singer, which would influence Jim's musical style later in life. Joining up with Midnight Magic, Jim played with, a se with seasoned professionals like Frank Guido and Reggie Brown. He considered this an honor and learned a lot from his time with them. His love for Southern Rock was evident when he joined the band Free Flight, where he enjoyed playing with Quinn Jones and his Hammond B3, although he did not enjoy loading it in and out of shows. Jim took a break from music for far too long, but enjoyed a successful career as a graphic artist, owning his own company, JMC Graphics. Finally, music called to him once again, and he purchased a guitar, his signature Paul Reed Smith, which suited his playing style perfectly. Before long, he was, became a founding member of the band Vertigo Vibe, which he enjoyed so much. When a female singer asked to do some fill-in work with the Vibe, Jim recalled his love of songs by female vocalists, so together they formed the band Sonic. Wanting to play more diverse shows, they started an acoustic act, LJ Rockin' Acoustic, and performed in restaurants and at private functions. Married in 2008, Jim and Liz performed over 100 shows each year between both acts and had the time of their lives. In May of 2009, Jim was diagnosed with cancer. He bravely battled for six months and performed his last show two weeks before his death that November. Jim often recalled a pivotal time in his life. In the eighth grade, he was into sports and playing guitar, but broke his wrist playing football. And it dawned on him that he would be only able to play sports for a short time, but he could play music for the rest of his life. So he quit football and focused on being a better guitarist. It was that story that inspired his wife Liz to start a scholarship fund in his memory through Reading Musical Foundation. Three fundraisers, fundraisers known as the Jimbo Jam brought together many musicians he played with over the years, good friends and those who inspired by his life in music. Enough money was raised to sustain the fund indefinitely and it provides 
need sensitive scholarships to eighth grade Reading School District students to help them continue playing music. Many deserving young musicians have benefited from the Jim McCauley Music Scholarship Fund. Jim's memory lives on in the lives he touched and the students benefiting from his scholarship fund and all those who loved his infectious laugh and love of playing guitar. He would be truly honored to be among the incredible musicians that have also really received this recognition. And we are honored to have Jim McCauley as part of the Burks Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I'd like to uh, invite uh, his wife Liz here to say a few words. Hi everyone, I just wanted to say hello. I'm down here in what is normally sunny Florida, but it's not right this moment. Uh, I hope you all are safe and, and well up there in Pennsylvania. I was planning on flying home today to be part of this, and of course that didn't happen. But I just wanted to say how proud and honored Jim would be to be a part of this. I think the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and everything that the uh, Brooks um, History Center does is such an amazing part of the community in Brooks County. I do miss you all. Um, so I just wanted to say he would, he would be so proud. I know Reggie's on the call. He always talked about his time playing with Reggie. I won't tell the stories, trust me, but um, <laughs> he would be just humbled to be a part of this group. So thank you very much and hope to see you all next year. Oh, thanks Liz. We're looking forward to next year for sure. Thanks. Uh, let's see, next uh, musician to induct this evening is Byron Mellinger. Uh, he is on the call this evening. He's joining us this evening. Uh, I'm ready to call on my co-host here, Mike Anderson, uh, to say a few words about Byron. Well, I can remember Byron from being the lead singer for a group called Auburn. They used to perform at the uh, Hamburg Fieldhouse every Sunday night. And everybody, that was the place to be. I remember him, uh, you know, forwarding that, uh, fronting that group and doing a great job with it. I don't have much information on where he was before that or after that. I don't know if he'd like to speak today or, or not, but uh, I'd love to hear from him. There he is. Uh, what a group. There is Auburn, a, a, a great group. And uh, uh, that's all I can say right now. <laughs> well, congratulations, Byron, to being a member of the uh, Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, <laughs> we'll look forward to, to next year when we can all get together here. But I really appreciate you tuning in this evening to, to, to join us. And um, we're glad to say a few words about you as we induct you this evening. Uh, next up, our next musician here is Mickey Rowe. Um, Mickey's not with us here this evening, but uh, Mickey Rowe played keyboards in the Jesters in the uh, early 60s. They released uh, a few records on the Al Stan label in 1962, and he can be heard on the Al Stan Masters CD with the Jesters doing their local hits, Beware It's Love, Ya Ta 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 Ta, and Do the Twirl, which caused a local dance craze in the Bucks County, or Berks County area, much like the twist. Uh, Mickey's keyboard work is heard prominently on that catchy tune. So congratulations to Mickey Rowe for being inducted in the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, and our next musician is, is with us here this evening. Benny Sims is being inducted in the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this evening. Uh, congratulations to you, sir. And uh, Mike, uh, uh, would you mind saying a few words about Benny for us? Oh, Benny's, Benny's a great uh, uh, staple of uh, Berks County music. He's been around for a long time and, and he's played with some of the top groups, A-list artists like Al Jarreau and Aretha Franklin. Lou Rawls, The Spinners, The Temptations, uh, Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes, Tower of Power, Pieces of a Dream, Three Degrees, uh, for which he was uh, the musical director for a long time, and uh, Dizzy Gillespie. And uh, I remember him from being with Marty and the Mangos and with uh, oh, some of the local groups that are still working with the Burks Jazz Fest. And uh, he has his own studio and I don't know if Benny wants to say anything about himself on here. What do you think? Is anything from Benny? Oh, I don't know. My own can you hear me? Yes, we can hear, hear you. you. Oh, okay. No, I'm just honored, honored to be here. My phone's ringing now. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody must have heard you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, it's a call for a gig somewhere. I believe. Yeah, oh, hey, we all need one right now with this stuff going on. Um, right. Yeah, listen, um, I'm honored to be part of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, even though I'm known, not totally known for rock and roll, but I did play a lot of rock and roll at one point here in Reading in a band called Springfield. 
and uh, we were a rock band with horns. And uh, we were very popular um, from here to, uh, well, the tri-state area. That was my first professional full-time gig, actually. So anyway, but I'm, I'm just glad to be here. Um, glad, you know, this, this is nice to, under the conditions that we're under, this is kind of cool. It's kind of a little more intimate. And uh, so it's, um, I mean, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm, uh, it's a crazy year. Um, I see Jerry Hollins here. And uh, Jerry, I haven't seen you in ages. <laughs> I haven't seen him in ages. And um, this year, I, this is a double, double award year for me. I um, got the Frankie Scott Award this year, too. So yeah, pretty excited. Jerry, um, I remember when you and Carol started that a long time ago. I remember when you used to visit, every time I was playing with Frankie Scott, you were there, and uh, it's really good to see you for sure. Thank That's you. about all. Congratulations. Hey, Jerry. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, we have not presented uh, the award to you yet for the uh, Frankie Scott for the 2020 Burks Jazz Fest, so we're still waiting to uh, give you an official ceremony on that as well. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So next up on our list, the next next uh, musician to be inducted this evening is Tom Vollmer. Uh, Tom is with us this evening, um, and uh, we'll say a few words. So I've got a few words to say about you, sir. So I'll go first, and I'll give you a chance to unmute yourself and be ready. Uh, but uh, Tom Vollmer uh, organized the Outlaws band in Berks County and played with them on and off for over 50 years. Uh, Tom played with Pat Garrett 25 years and has uh, had a long career jamming with many local and surrounding area musicians. And a few of them are Craig Fisher, Mark James, Bobby Mercer, Doc Mulligan, and Andy Roberts, Herb, Ger uh, Herb Gurry, or Jerry, uh, Bill Bowers, uh, Shorty Long, Sonny Miller, just to name a few. Uh, Tom's musical contributions are unique. He played and promoted the steel guitar and has worked to incorporate the instrument into all kinds of music, including country, rock, pop, and gospel and Christian music. Uh, Tom feels fortunate to have played or opened for Ray Price, Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard, Johnny Cash, uh, Connie Smith, and June Carter. And, and many of Berks County female singers from Mary Lou of Uncle Jack and Mary Lou up to Taylor Swift. Uh, he is 84 and still playing. So congratulations, Tom, for being inducted into the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, please, please say a few words. <laughs> well, well, I feel honored for sure. And uh, I've been so fortunate. Uh, I have, I, I see a lot of us have health issues and passed away from cancer. I've been through the cancer two times. And uh, uh, my doctor, Lou over at the Reading Hospital says the mu music is probably what's keeping me going, but I've, I've been so fortunate with the music and to play all types of music, trying to get the pedal steel guitar involved in it, and I guess that's part of the reason I'm, I've been able to play with so many because there's not too many people playing pedal steel, but anyway, you know, I am know I'm in there with a great bunch of guys, and uh, in fact, it's kind of strange, but uh, working with Pat Garrett right now, uh, the present band will all be in this Hall of Fame, being Mitch Wolf on keyboards and uh, uh, Keith Brooks on on, uh, on percussion. So we're still going and we're still playing. And uh, thanks so much for inviting me in. And it's great to see all these people still playing at, at our age. And like I say, uh, I've been so blessed. 84 years old and still tormenting everybody with my pedal steel. So uh, thanks so much for in, in, inviting me in. Oh, goodness. It's an honor to have you. Thank you. Okay. So we are, are moving on to bands and groups to in, induct this evening. And we are starting up with a bunch of funk. And we have Reggie Brown on the call, and I'm going to call my co-host Mike Anderson here to say a few words as we 
uh, induct Bunch of Funk into the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Sure. Well, I can start out talking with Bunch of Funk because I played with them for a while. Uh, I've with a number of these people, Mike Garner and, uh, and Dave Elts, and it was, it's a lot of fun. And, and I had a great time playing with Bunch of Funk. Bunch of Funk's been around for 20 years in this community, over 20 years. Uh, and they were started by Reggie Brown, who's here, and he's still with the group. Uh, it's gone through various combinations of musicians, and they were all great. They're all fantastic. I'm still playing with a, a couple of them now, and, uh, and they're, they're uh, delighting audiences all over. And, and I'm, I'm sure Reggie has some things to say. Yeah, what, do you, what do you have to say, Reggie? Oh, Reggie, where's Reggie? Uh oh, My, I think you need to unmute. Oh, I've, I've unmuted. There you are. Now we can there hear you. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's very much an honor to be inducted into this with such great people from the past, present, and I know that there's going to be a lot more in the future. Funny how life has its turns. Uh, I thought I was going to be in the NBA, five seven point guard for the Detroit Pistons. But that <laughs> happened. <laughs> <It's a bit. laughs> Music came to take over in, in theater, and I've been truly blessed to play with some of the best, best musicians and some of the highest people of integrity in my career, and that's you included also, Mike. Thanks. You know, great, uh, great playing with you. We had a lot of fun. Uh, unfortunately, a couple of my, one just passed, Dave Buffington, my trumpet player, for 14 years, and Dave Elt's been with me since, oh gosh up until this day of passing, and that had to be about 12 or 13 years. But uh, Bill Gingrich and, let's see, Tony Kavars, uh, Jimmy Rosario, a uh, number of people, Bill Babinski and Ron Warmer, Jimmy Fingers, all these are top flight musicians, you know? And the musicians that I play with have been, gosh, from all over the tri-state. I've been really, really lucky. Uh, playing and having a band for 20 years, a large band of 10 or more pieces. Uh, we played so many fantastic venues from Manhattan to the White House. You know, I had the honor of playing uh, two presidential inaugurations and playing the White House twice. Uh, I mean, that's a lifetime memory for me doing the Clinton administration. Uh, jazz festival, I've been involved since I've been back here since Gosh, 2000, 2000, yeah, 2000. Gosh, time flies. <laughs> and it's, I've seen it grow and grow, and fortunately being a part of it. Uh, being inducted into this uh, Hall of Fame is uh, very much a high point in my life. And uh, again, the great people that I've met, the type of music that I've done, uh, it's spilled over into quite a bit of the theater for me, including a uh, Reading Civic Opera doing Jesus Christ Superstar, where I played Judas Iscariot, was one of the most one of my most moving parts um, parts in a play, and numerous others. And most of them music are, are musicals, and uh, the people that I met uh, doing that genre and that those venues were phenomenal. It's really lucky. Reading is surprisingly, and and as I am learning, watching this as quite the mecca of talent. I mean, from all walks of life. It amazes me. Uh, Liz spoke of Jimmy uh, McCauley, who always was very young when he was playing with me. And uh, him and his guitar, his laugh, and his motorcycle. He was always there. Great guy. Loved him. And uh, I know he's always with me. And I, I think about him quite a bit as I think about Dave Elts and Dave Buffington, who passed, and Don Walker who also was a member of a bunch of fuck. I mean, I had a list here the other night. I made a list of all the musicians. And gosh, it took up a whole sheet of paper, and, you know, from all areas of the, of the tri-state. And uh, man, some phenomenal talent, especially here in Reading. I hope this continues to go on and on and on because it's a good thing. And to, uh, unfortunately, due to conditions, we're doing this in you know, the tech way. But uh, however, it's still great. And next year, when we get to see and touch and hug and swap stories, it's even going to be twice as exciting. And uh, again, I thank you all. Oh, thank, thank you, Reggie. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 
Okay. Let's see here. The next group that we have up here is honeybees. Uh, we don't have any reps from the uh, honeybees on the call, but uh, I do have some information here. So the honeybees were uh, early pioneers in rock and roll in Berks County in the 1950s, 1960s, and their members included uh, Rodman Lala Beckham as the lead, uh, Vic Johnson Jr., uh, Skip Johnson, Barry Boswell is the second tenor, and Benji Chuckles Williams, here in my notes is listed as the boss. Maybe that was bass, or, or maybe he was the boss in the band. But the uh, but to go on, uh, Rodham uh, Beckham and his cousin Vic Johnson Jr. graduated from Reading High School in the class of 1950. They served together in the Korean War, where Beckham lost his legs in an encounter with a landmine. Upon their return to civilian life, they began harmonizing with Vic's brother, Skip Johnson, another cousin, Barry Boswell, and Benji Chuckles Williams, a friend of the family. Vic Johnson Sr., who was a well-established musician in Redding's club scene, knew Grover Barber, who founded uh, B Records, and arranged an addition. Barber and Russ Golding, a young aspiring songwriter, so impressed by the group's talent that they wanted to record them as soon as possible. Barber gave the group their name and arranged a recording session in Juranis's living room at Fifth and Buttonwood Streets. Wow. This session produced the first size for their own label, B Records, released on August 1st, 1957. Soon the record was on every jukebox in Berks County and getting heavy play locally on WEEU radio. Beckham, who was nicknamed Lala early in life as a result of a younger brother being unable to pronounce his real name, sang lead on both sides of the record. The group was booked several nights a week for the rest of the year, becoming regulars at Redding's uh, Melody and Mademoiselle Bars. The Circle Bar in Pottstown, as well as Pushniks and Chicks Maples in Lebanon. This exposure drew offers from some major labels, most notably Atlantic, to purchase the Masters and sign the group. Barber turned down the offer, convinced that he could promote the record himself. However, when a scheduled date on Dick Clark's American Bandstand fell through in October 1957, the group started pulling away from the label, turning to Charlie Booker uh, to land them bigger gigs in New York City. The following year, they played, it, uh, they played at Club Harlem, Albert College, and Shorty Long Santa Fe Ranch, where they opened for Billy, Bill Haley and the Comets. Especially popular was their rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Sadly, this arrangement this, um, and the song slated to be their second 45 entitled My Knees Are Knocking" was never recorded. Uh, the Honeybees did some session work for B as backup singers for Hermie Herman and disbanded towards the end of 1958. So uh, we're very proud to be inducting the band Honeybees into the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this evening. Our next band up on the list is Stefan. And Mike Anderson, my co-host, is going to say a few words about Stefan. Well, Steph is the name of Oh, the Steph. Oh, I got a typo here. Well, it's short from the name Mike Steffi, a uh, bass uh -oh. player. Uh, this is the original band uh, was consisted of Spiros Billis on drums, Rick Manwiller on keys, who has uh, passed away recently, uh, Dewey Wall, Mike Steffi, and, and Chuck Kayo on lead vocals. Now, Chuck left uh, about a year after they started the band, went to California, and uh, Mike Steffi also left the band and became like a four-piece, four, uh, almost a pro progressive rock band, and at some points were playing as a three-piece. Um, and the next few versions of Steff included uh, Eric Rudy on guitar, uh, Glenn Balthaser on bass, uh, and one version had Lee Spatz, who was apparently deceased, uh, on keys, Roger Dirk on guitar, and... Um, and the version one played a lot of good originals or a lot of original music. They were a rock band and they played a lot of clubs, but they did some of their own stuff. And um, they, it was an extraordinary band. And, um, but it, it lasted for maybe two or three years, but they were playing all over the, the different clubs in Reading and, and surrounds. That's what I can say about Steph. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. 
Well, we welcome them to the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, along with our next band, the Sharks. Uh, we don't have any reps from the band on the call, but I do have some uh, information here. But we weren't able to, I got a note here that we weren't able to get in touch with members of the Sharks for today's induction ceremony. So maybe this is an opportunity to make a call for, you know, to anybody who uh, knows uh, former members of the band or uh, to uh, get in touch with them and, and let them know that they've been inducted into the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, and uh, now we, you know, because of our current situation, we got a year, an extra year on the clock to uh, track them down and, and hopefully um, get in touch with somebody so that they can know that they're being honored this way. Uh, but the, the Sharks were formed in 1981 by Doug Phillip, uh, Doug Phillips, rather, uh, Sam Lugar, uh, Dave Schaefer, and Steve Zero. After years of performing in cover rock, funk, and disco bands, the boys knew they were not going, they were going nowhere fast. Uh, the band members uh, started playing cover versions of songs by new wave artists such as Elvis Costello, U2, and Talking Heads, but soon progressed to performing their own material as the Sharks. The band built up a regular following playing gigs up and down the East Coast, and their first single caught the ear of Billy Terrell, who asked the band to cover a, uh, record a cover of Fly Like an Eagle for the Philadelphia's Eagle Super Bowl. Uh, oh, it was Roman numerals, Alexis, on, and I, <laughs> which Super Bowl this was, but um they they played for uh, they played the the cover of Fly Like an Eagle for the the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Uh, this uh, led to a guest spot on AM Philadelphia and gigs at uh, venues such as New York's uh, CBGB station. Uh, the Sharks won M MTV's Basement Tape competition in late 1986 by the largest margin in the history of the MTV Basement Tape uh, competition leading to a four EP contract with Electra Records, who immediately put the Sharks into RPM Studios and the Power Station in New York City uh, to record in a black and white world, which featured On My Own and Only Time Will Tell. Videos for both songs were shot on location in New York Times Square. Only Time Will Tell was the second most requested song during MTV's Top 10 Countdown for two weeks in a row in 1988. With the success of the Elektra release and the support of MTV, the Sharks toured and shared the stage with the Go-Go's, a flock of seagulls, Robert Palmer, Joan Jett, and the Blackhearts, uh, the Romantics, Night Ranger, The Fix, and the Stray Cats. The band had a falling out with Elektra, but continued to tour and record. In 1986, guitarist Steve Zero was replaced by Philadelphia-based guitarist Roger Girk, who had previously been with Robert Hazard, uh, the front and uh, Pegasus. Uh, Girk stayed with the band until his departure in 1989 with 12, 12 successful years and a lifetime of great memories. The Sharks decided to call it quits in 1992 when they realized that Electra Records was not holding up to their promise. The Sharks with members uh, Shay Quinn, Sam Lugar, Doug Phillips, and Mar Mark Showers and still Steve Zero have reunited yearly at the Village Nightclub in Lancaster, PA for reunion concerts where the band started. Schaefer is a music teacher uh, for the ELCO Middle School, and Girk has been an active blues performer since 1990. On October 8, 2009, lead singer uh, Sam Lugar Rawhauser died of lung cancer, disbanding the band. The Sharks have been performing with Sam's son leading uh, locals. Uh, Sam's son Ian is a doppelganger. Uh, his vocal tone is so close to his father's that it borders on the supernatural. So we welcome the Sharks into the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, we'll look for extra time uh, to to get in touch with them. And then, and now everybody knows that I'm not an Eagles fan, and I'll have to go figure out all the years they were in the Super Bowl, <laughs> which ones they were. Uh, our next uh, band up on the list is uh, Vic and the Catalinas, um, and we welcome them to the Birch County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but unfortunately we weren't able to get any information or photos for the band uh, prior to this evening. So 
again, with, with extra time on the clock before uh, uh, next year's uh, performance, uh, we'll be able to hopefully get some information and let them know they're being honored this way. Well, if I can interject here. Oh, sure. Yeah, the, I mean, I remember Butch Spencer being part of that group. Uh, I think Archie Jenkins with it and was with them. And I think Phil Long might have played with them for a while on keyboards. They had a couple of singles out um, in the late 60s, and they were the big, hot R&B group here in, in the late 60s. They were playing everywhere, um, and what a great group they were. Um, I wish I had more information, and I wish I could remember everybody, but I used to go see them a lot. And uh, very inspiring for me playing uh, R&B for myself. Ben, I was able to find an audio file online and I put it into the PowerPoint. I'm not sure if it'll work or not, but if we're interested. Give it a shot. Here we go. Is this talking about talking about my girl? Is that the song? I think so. That's, oh, there, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Treat me good but every time I see your face Girl, you know I can't replace You mean so much to me I'm talking about my girl Oh yeah Why do you want to treat me good? I'm talking about my girl Yeah Why do you want to make me cool? Make me cool I know that you are meant to be The only, only one for me why you so bad? I'm talking about my girl. Oh yeah. Why you wanna treat me blue? Treat me blue. You know you treat me bad. You know you make me sad. But you know I can't resist. Yeah. Yeah. Brings back a lot of memories, I think. <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks, Alexis. Okay, well, that includes uh, the section of uh, bands that we're inducting this evening, and we're moving on now to the People's Choice Awards. Uh, and the People's Choice Awards inductees are the winners of a popular vote that is distributed annually online by the Berks History Center and the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, these are musicians and groups uh, who the people of Berks County think they deserve to be added to the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Last year, we adjusted the uh, voting format since our previous format was sponsored by the Reading Eagle. Uh, we induct uh, People's Choice winners from three categories. Uh, living musicians, deceased musicians, and band or groups. And here are our 2020 People's Choice winners. Uh, first up, uh, we have uh, Bobby Mercer being inducted this evening. Um, he's unfortunately not able to, to join us, uh, uh, but uh, we welcome him to the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and, and congratulate him on being voted in by his People's Choice Award. Uh, next up, we have uh, Frank, Frankie Scott, who uh, has uh, sadly passed. Um, there is, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, a gentleman, Jerry Holleran, is on the call with us this evening here uh, in, uh, in support of uh, Frankie Scott. At, 
I have a little information here. Although primarily known as a blues jazz tenor saxophonist, Redding's Frankie Scott from 1923 to 1925 was also involved in early days of rock and roll. In 1957, Rudy Pompley of Bill Haley and the Comets couldn't tour and record for many weeks due to illness. Frankie Scott was hired to play sax for several uh, Decca record sessions, including the single Billy Goat, and Rockin' uh, Rollin' River, Rover, <clears throat> and the Rockin' Oldies album. He also uh, toured with the Comets during uh, Pompoli's absence, which likely caused some controversy in those radically divided days since Scott was Black. Scott uh, occasionally played with the Comets after Pompoli returned. In 1956, Scott recorded the single, Walking Up Four Flights of Stairs, she said, backed by the Comets. The single was released on both the Casablanca and Cap labels. Credit to Frankie Scott and the Scotsman. Scott toured uh, with the uh, Ink Spots early in his career. So we welcome uh, Frankie Scott into the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and congratulate him and his, his memory. Uh, and, and glad that folks still remember his music and voted him in this evening. Uh, next up here, we have uh, uh, Phil Taft, uh, who is also sadly passed. Um, his brother, uh, Warren Taft, was, uh, was going to try and make the call, but I don't think he was able to join us this evening in the end. Um, but on Phil, the call. was that? He's on the call. Oh, is he? Oh, good. Okay. I can only see a few faces here. I can only, and so I didn't, I wouldn't realize, oh, I'm so glad uh, that he's here. That's wonderful. Um, Phil was uh, the most uh, likable, talented friend and musician. He played uh, Hammond organ and keyboards for the fabulous Slut Brothers. He was a Vietnam veteran and supported and played all of Berks County's nightclubs. Uh, so I, I just think that's wonderful um, that uh, his music is still remembered enough that uh, folks voted him in. Um, and so uh, congratulations. And I'm, I'm glad that Warren was able to, to join us this evening here. That's wonderful. Uh, next up here is a, is a band. Um, it's the Jordan Brothers. And uh, with a, and we're also we're joined by Frank Jordan, um, and I'll give him a, an opportunity to say a few words here in a moment. Um, but with a career that spanned from 1954 to 1985, the Frackville Brothers' musical adventure evolved into a phenomenal 42 recordings on 15 different labels. The Jordan Brothers appeared with host Dick Clark on American Bandstand and were featured on Jerry Blavitt's WFIL discophonic TV scene. Statewide performances included the Cole Regions local dance halls, Will Lake, Lakeside Ballroom, the Alley, and the Fieldhouse. Some of the Jordan Brothers' greatest hits include Heart and Beach Party. Their biggest hit, Gimme Some Lovin', came in 1966, which charted at number two on the WRAWAM radio station in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, so I'm so glad tonight we have somebody, we have one of the Jordan brothers here, Frank Jordan. I'd love to uh, invite you to say a few words here. Thank you so much, Ben. I've been waiting and it's really nice to be here, uh, especially with all these uh, talented musicians, you know, it, it's a life that uh, can't be compared to any other life. And, and I'm so happy to be here with these guys. I, a lot of the names I recognize. And uh, I'm happy about that because, uh, you know, when you recognize a name, you go, yeah, I was there at that time. So it's kind of neat. But I thought rather than going to a 35 year span of music, and that career is quite lengthy. And there are so many stories and so many wonderful people, especially the Philadelphia circuit with Highland and Joe Niagara and Jerry Blavitt, as you had mentioned. I thought I'd just zone in on how much Berks County meant to the Jordan Brothers and what it did for us. Berks County was just a, a huge bunch of people that traveled up on 61, Route 61, to go to our dances. I did write something down to help me out a little bit, but uh, again, just so proud and happy to be here. And if you don't mind, I will just uh, read what I have here. Thank you, Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame committee members. I speak for my brothers when I say that this is a tremendous honor and privilege 
to be an inductee in the Berks County Hall of Fame. I only wish my mother and father could be here. They were always proud of our accomplishments. To all of the committee members and members, we are humbled. As I reflect on those memorable years, I can safely say that Berks County was a significant part of all that was happening back then. Even before Willow Lake days, we appeared at a place called Renegers Market off Route 61 in Orangeburg. Car after car traveled Route 61, wanting to get into that building. The many teens that frequently visited that dance proved that Burke County had Jordan Brother fever. I truly believe that there were more people from Burke County than from the many locations in the hometown regions. For that, we are always grateful. That combined with our record, Give Me Some Love, in reaching the number two position on the head rocking radio station back then, WRAWAM. It showed the enthusiasm of the many attendees at that popular dance at Willow Lake in Schuylkill Haven. Again, I thank you for this awesome privilege. Thank you so much for your loyal support throughout the years. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Yeah, that's wonderful. Ben, I'm going to have to pull out on you here. I'm sorry. It's been a real pleasure to be with all of you, but I've got to go on another program just like this for a different organization. Thanks again, folks. Yeah, Jerry, thanks so much for the Frankie Scott Award, too. It's a, it's a great honor, and I know it. I know Frankie Scott has a lot to do with Benny Sims' career, too, as well. Thank you. Inspiring. Good luck to you. Thank you. I have to say something. Go for it. Frank from the Jordan Brothers. If there was one group that I can remember seeing somebody play the bass guitar for the first time, it was the Jordan Brothers. I want to tell you something. I'm, I was born in Pottsville. And we moved to Pottstown uh, when I was 11 years old. And um, so we would come up during our teen, teenage years, we would come up and stay with my grandmother in Pottsville during the summer for a couple of weeks. And we would always go down to the lake to see the Jordan brothers. I didn't even play an instrument then. And I would stand in front of them Jordan brothers and I was such a big fan. And I, you right. guys were rocking this, you guys were rocking that place out. And the bass in that place, I swear, I'll never forget it as long as I live. That bass would be rocking that hall and the Jordan Brothers were just, I loved you guys. And I'm just so, I'm really, really cool. It's so cool to see you here. It is so cool because I haven't seen or heard of you guys in so long, but if there was ever a group that absolutely made me think one day I might do that, it was you guys. Oh, that's great. Bernie, thank you so much. Thank you. Coming from you, that's a compliment. <laughs> thank you. you guys are my favorite band. <laughs> I'm telling you. Thank you. Thank, I want to say that, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, that really did my heart good to see you. Thank you. Same here. Uh, that's wonderful. And, uh, and actually, that brings us to the conclusion of our program tonight. So, you know, I'm so glad that we were able to do something, um, but we're going to have one hell of a party next year. And uh, we're going to, we'll have a combined show and, and do our awards. Um, and uh, we're going to, it was just going to be, we're going to have a, we're going to have a lot of fun. So uh, thank you all for joining us here. and. Um, just a, just a last plug uh, for the History Center, the Berks History Center. You can follow us uh, on social media using, you know, at Berks History. And you can also follow the Berks uh, County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at Berks Rock and Roll. So thanks again for, for joining us. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing everybody next year in person for a big party. Thanks. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, everybody. And I just want to thank those people who are watching this now in Pennsylvania's Americana Region Festival. You know, we pulled a virtual community together literally overnight, really, to tell you the truth. 
And to sit here now and watch all these guys and gals from all walks of life talk about their musical experiences. And trust me, that conversation could go on for hours. <laughs> but to listen to this, I think back to when we first started the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I just want to close with this. I'd like to thank uh, the people at the Berks History Center because when this came up and I talk to them about the fact that I thought we had enough musicians in here, that rock and roll was a legitimate art form and everything else related to it, blues and R&B and jazz and funk and all of that stuff, they didn't, uh, they didn't laugh. They took it seriously. And look at this now. Look at all these great brothers and sisters come together through music who have devoted their lives to improving the lives of others through music. I'm so proud of you all. I'm just thrilled to death that you're all involved with this, this, this family. So those of you watching here on the Fest page, it's great. We're going to be following up with some great interviews that they've done. What's the name of that show, Alexis? You've got a show you're going to be putting on here. The interview show. In Tune is the show. In Tune. Okay. So we've got some great guys coming up to talk and girls on that one. And then I'm going to see if I can dig up some of the live footage that we recorded at some of the Magical History Tour shows too, just to show you the, the fun time that we've had. So Thanks, everybody, for watching. See ya.